tumors are teratomas, which are tumors of, of, of undifferentiated cells. And you know, by the way, just in, in medicine, uh, these tumors are not common, but teratomas can be found in, 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 a, in people with, with new tumors where you find teeth and hair and other organ systems in, say, an intra-abdominal tumor. So why should a tumor make teeth? Because it comes from a stem cell-like cell that has the capability of differentiating into different cell types. Go ahead. You, you seem like you had a whole yeah, list for me. Yeah, I mean, shortening of telomeres is a whole pro part of process of cell death, programmed cell death. The placental cell pr presumably has the capability of having pluripotent stem cells harvested from it like any other organ system, but yet that would not be, I mean, remember the totipotent cell can go to placenta or can go to various tissues during further embryogenesis, but the placenta is a differentiated cell type. It's like any other organ system. So that would likely not be any better source than skin or adipose tissue or other organ systems. Except it's, remember, the placenta's young. <laughs> I mean, whereas the adult, we're all got, we got 30, 40, 50, 60 plus years on us. Those cells have less capability, I think, in general, of being made pluripotent. Yes, sir? I noticed one thing in that uh, video that they, uh, on the one hand, said embryonic stem cell, then they said stem cell shutting out adult stem cells completely. In the video? Yeah. You're correct. The video was entirely devoted to embryonic stem cells. Gave no room for adult, actually mentioned adult stem cells, but had fairly negative comments to make about the potential of adult stem cells. This field, again, is moving very, very quickly. And remember what I told you that Dr. Roop, our head of stem cell biology at the university has said, he thinks within a couple of years the embryonic stem cell issue is gonna be history because there's so much going on in adult stem cells now about the ability to reprogram those cells. Proof of concept though isn't there yet, that these cells can be made, be utilized, and cure human diseases, yes. Yes. I think it's a very, very good question. I think this is kind of one type of research that hangs out with the other one. And the policy of the Bush administration, I think, probably did impede to some extent adult stem cell research. I think it could have impeded it. Now, the, the thing that, that I think we need to understand is that adult stem cell research was ongoing anyway during the Bush ban on new cell lines being developed and embryonic stem cell research being funded by the federal government. So, but the thing is, research in stem cell biology, I think is not so narrow that people only work on one type of cell. I mean, in other words, the person who may be interested in embryonic stem cells ultimately may see the fact that there are limitations there too, like the question from the back about tumors being formed from embryonic stem cells. So you can have your own opinion. That's simply an opinion that maybe it did impede some of the adult stem cell research because stem cell research overall, I think, may have had a cloud over it to some extent. But talking to my colleague at the University of Colorado now, he really feels the train has left the station on the IPS cell or the induced pluripotent stem cell from adults. And I honestly feel I have no moral objection at all or biblical obje objection at all to adult stem cell research. I mean, just think of, of all the other kinds of things we've benefited from in the areas of, of, of implantation, et cetera, transplantation, all the things that have been accomplished. And the adult stem cell seems consistent to me with God's principles of life and truth. Yes, sir. Do we know how the embryo itself manages to differentiate 
these stem cells hmm. yes. into organs, yes. specific stem cells? It's a very good question. The question is, do we know how the embryo itself directs cells into specific organs or tissues? And we're learning a lot more. The whole mechanism by which the, the blastocyst ultimately can create cells of different organs is now better understood to the extent that we can make, make cells now that become heart cells or become bone cells, make them back into pluripotent stem cells. So if we can reverse that process, that's indirectly telling us what takes those cell systems forward into specific organs. This is a very exciting time for research. Now, is that research going to be generated with embryonic stem cells? And from using those cells, understand better what makes these cells what they become and then apply that to adult stem cells? I don't think that's necessary. I think we can use animals to understand from, from blastocysts in a mouse or a rat or a guinea pig, ultimately the factors that control that differentiation, and then start applying that to adult stem cells to understand that differentiation process. But it's a very, very good question. And by the way, some of these proteins and factors that make the embryo ultimately start turning itself to specific organ development, some of the factors used to reverse that process are factors that ultimately could potentially be oncogenic themselves. And when I say oncogenic, cause cancer. So we, we got to be careful with what we're doing here because there could be potential harm about redifferentiating human cells to make them into pluripotent stem cells. So that's a very careful area of ongoing investigation. Sure. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I would like to know specifically what improvements have been done at Craig Rehabilitation Hospital and what source they used for their work. Well, maybe you've gone a bit past what I said. The question relates to what improvements have been made at Craig Hospital. I have no direct knowledge of any stem cell related research that's going. Margaret, I don't think you know of anything more than I. 